from Las Vegas. It's the Cube covering AWS reInvent 2018. Brought to you by Amazon Web Services, Intel, and their ecosystem partners. Okay, welcome back everyone. Live here at Amazon Web Services reInvent 2018 floor. Two cubes here, wall to wall coverage. Two, second day of three days. I'm John Furrier, Dave Vellante. Dave, six years. And we got Maria DiMari here, who's Vice President and General Manager of Lockheed Martin Space. Big news yesterday was the announcement of AWS Satellite Ground Station. Correct. You guys are partnering with AWS. This is an outside the box, pioneering like move for Amazon. Um, covered it yesterday on our blog. We, we were giving commentary. This is going to power the IoT edge. And so essentially it kills the notion of an edge because if there's connectivity everywhere, there is no edge. That's right, exactly. The world is round and it's space. That's exactly right. That's what this you're is, doing. This is truly disruptive. My, my team um, in Lockheed Martin, we provide ground for satellite systems and it's generally usually a physical place that exists where you know where it is, there's a large parabolic antenna. This completely disrupts that whole concept. Um, it becomes a network node of antennas, low cost antennas for our customers, and it, it's truly disruptive, exactly to your point. So let's talk about how it works. You have this thing called Verge, right. which you're doing for the cube stats you did for Orbit. Not related to our cube, different cube. A different cube. So Verge is part of it. Talk about how it works with Amazon. Explain the system, what was, what's, how it's going to work. Okay. What's, what's it entail? Sure, so Amazon, with, we together had this collaboration which we rolled out yesterday. Andrew Jassy from Amazon AWS rolled out uh, AWS Ground Station, which is 12 parabolic uh, antennas that'll be at Amazon locations at their um, their global Region. regions, thank you. And uh, so that allows for download of, uh, downlink of satellite data to those. Our system is complementary to that and separate and it's low cost antennas uh, across other areas, um, which allows for more frequent uh, connectivity for the satellites, more frequent um, opportunities to downlink data. And all of this is available to customers as a service. So you are only paying yeah. for it when you're using it. Yeah. Which is really key when you think about um, the cost of entry to have access to space. It's very expensive if you have to build these large parabolics. Yeah. This allows uh, startups, It makes provisioning a data center look like a picnic. Yeah. <laughs> to provision <laughs> satellites. How did it come about? Where did the idea come from? How would that collaboration start? I'm glad you asked. So we had um, Andrew Jassy and our executive vice president, Rick Ambrose, uh, you know, know each other, and they had a conversation one day and they said, we should do something together. And we actually, uh, Teresa Carlson and I, work for both of them, got together, got our teams together out in um, Denver, Colorado for a two-day Shark Tank type activity. And we just brought some of our best and brightest from both teams across all of Amazon, not even just AWS, but other activities in Amazon. Young people that just graduated from college. Yeah some of our senior fellows, everybody. And we just put them in a room and said, what are some things that, what do we have yeah. that we're working on that we might be able to bring Let's together? rethink things, let's reinvent. Exactly. I like to think it's like, we call it peanut butter and chocolate because they're great separately, but when you bring them together, they're even better. And these systems are really complementary to each other. Um, and it, it's just, it's been really neat. And the it, teams have had a lot of fun learning from each other. It certainly changes connectivity to places that don't have connectivity. So edge computing had a limitation between power and Connectivity, right. power. You get battery, low, low, you know, low battery, um, powered batteries that last a long time. To now satellite connectivity, so there's no excuse to traverse back all the data. Right. So backhaul is huge here. Right. Exactly. Huge advantage. Right. So factory and remote areas. Um, as you guys did the announcement yesterday, um, were there developers involved? How do you see developers playing with this? So let's just say I'm into space and I want to provision some satellites. What do I do? And so, so I get on the console and say, you know, move the satellite like a video game and like start. Mostly what you do is make sure that you can downlink whatever type of data you work with can get to you. The point of both these systems, it gets data into the cloud. And that's where the real magic happens because when you can get that downlink down and start using artificial intelligence, machine learning, the services that are available on that data, 
Now you can take action, which is really what our customers' missions are about. It's not necessarily about the satellites or downlinking data from satellites. It's about getting data that you can act and, and on. And turning into insights. That's, exactly. Uh, so talk about space uh, history that you guys have had, and big legacy with Lockheed Martin. Obviously, you know, Teresa Carlson, and I love to talk about Space Force that was announced, and just the notion of having a Space Force is kind of, people love, you know, seeing, you know, Blue Origin and you know, SpaceX rockets landing back on the pads. So huge interest in the culture back to space. There it, is. I have two kids, I, I'm sorry, three kids at home, two that are actually interested in space, <laughs> <laughs> I should say. Um, but yeah, my kids talk about it. You know, we just had the Mars lander, yeah. the InSight lander Monday. And we were at dinner Monday night and my kids were like, mom, you know, yeah. we landed something on Mars. I'm like, that was us, you know? So <laughs> it's, cool. it's really an exciting time to be a part of space. A lot of it's because so much technology has advanced recently to the point where we can do a lot more things than we've been able to do And the costs well. keep coming down, right? And the right? costs keep coming down, so. So, you know, in IT, we can easily envision the, the heavy, heavy lifting and the before and the after. Can you describe what a customer's going to go through now and how it's different? Like yeah, comparing. sure, so yeah. if you were going to um, build a parabolic antenna, it might cost a million dollars, you have to have land, you might need to have a fence line, you have to maintain it, operate it. This is available as a service, so you could imagine if this exists for our customers that might want to, you know, maybe there's a, a fire situation and someone needs rapid access to get imagery down to see where something's happened, as a service, they can connect, we can get them on quickly and have that, you know. Drones, you can, all kinds of other moving vehicles, oh. mobility kind of feature. Well, I mean, mostly right now we're dealing with satellites, but satellite. that's a good idea that we'll take back. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, drone deliveries? Um, couldn't, couldn't resist. Invite John to your next uh, <laughs> yeah. Woods meeting. Our, uh, uh, hey, our next Shark Tank, well, you're invited. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll talk him, I'll video, case, <laughs> video core the whole thing. Okay, so where does this go next? How do you envision it evolving? Obviously the parts of Amazon solid, connecting to the cloud, analytics are in the cloud, a lot of horsepower. Absolutely, What's I mean, next? you know we just went to Mars, there's a lot of things that are going to be happening in deep space, there's a lot of excitement about what's going on in Mars, in you know, the moon, et cetera. So I will tell you there were more ideas that came out of the yeah. Shark Tank. I think that, um, you know, this is the start, I think, of a really great longer term relationship, yeah. I hope, and uh, that you know, we, awesome. we do have some other ideas that we can't really yeah. necessarily I mean, share. Everyone knows Jeff Bezos loves space. Yes. Joke we always say is maybe they put the data centers in space, in Mars. Okay. You're yeah. going to have to have something. <laughs> <laughs> Be a lot cooler. Maria, thanks for coming on, explaining the uh, relationship with Amazon, the announcement. Love it, I think it's super groundbreaking, yes. pioneering, different, but it shows where it's going. Right, absolutely. It, Powering a lot of things since the beginning, day one. Exactly. Congratulations. Thank you. Okay, live CUBE coverage here, day two. Wrapping up, I'm John Furrier, Dave Vellante. Thanks for watching. We'll see you tomorrow. <laughs>